Well, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Elliot Callen, CEO of a Brighter Day and Prosperity Financial Group, and I would like to welcome you to another episode of VT Expert. Very exciting because we have a program director, Shana Steinberg, of a Brighter Day. We're going to talk about depression and stress. I know these are not optimistic and positive issues, but they're real issues in the world today. We're going to talk a little bit about fundraising and how charities make money. And the reason we're doing this now is because so many individuals donate towards the end of the year, particularly November and December. That's the big time for them. And mostly because they get a huge tax deduction or they can get a huge tax deduction if they itemize uh, on their IRS form. But we're gonna talk about what's going on. So let's first talk about charities in general. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about Shana. She's just finishing uh, and completing her master's program in psychology, uh, which, means, which means for me, as sort of someone who touches that world, She's analyzing every word I say all the time. That's what that means. So welcome, Shana. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Oh, you're welcome. I'm going to do my best not to crack my knuckles or my neck or anything because I don't want you to read you know, anything about me inside. Oh, that. man. So, so let's talk about, first of all, let me talk about you for just a moment before we get into a brighter day and depression and teens and all those wonderful things that you're doing to make a difference in lives. And we're going to talk about how charities fundraising in a few moments too. Let me ask you a question because some of the people watching this, you're young enough to be their daughter. Uh, you know, some of them you're contemporary with, depending on who's watching this. So what makes somebody become a psychology major? Why get a master's or even a PhD? Tell me about that track and how you chose that track in, 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 in a minute or so. Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, I kind of stumbled into the psychology world. Um, you know, I, I coach volleyball. I've coached for uh, six going on seven years. I also got to play for 10 years. And um, I've been able to work with a lot of teens um, and just seeing some of their struggles really inspired me to take that path. Along with, you know, some of my family members have had, uh, you know, issues with mental illness. And that really propelled me in that direction. But I think people, you know, end up in the psychology field because of some kind of passion. They have a reason to be there. Um, and I think most psychology majors and those who work in the field end up helping people in some way, shape or form. So I think there's a lot of empathy, empathy there. So I, I think a lot of empathetic people um, end up being psychology majors and uh, yeah. Well, good for you. If you didn't say the word empathy, I was going to say that because that's most people confuse empathy and sympathy, and you know we need we don't need to go through the definitions of it, but they're they're vastly different. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, but it's, it's, I admire you for your empathetic disposition. That's just fabulous. Thank uh, you. So let let's go through first the problem of the world that we're in of teens. I just finished giving a speech this morning all about teen depression, teen suicide, but what's going on in that world? And, you know, and I think your perspective would be so different from mine just because of age um, and, and the fact that I had a child that took his life. Mm -hmm. But from your end, what's going on with teens today? And what's the big problem today out there? Well, I think teens always um, are struggling with mental illness, but I think the pandemic um, really has just um, intensified that. So, you know, just a couple statistics I'd love to share. 18.8% .8 of high school students reported having seriously considered suicide in the past year. Now, this is between the year of 2020 and 2021. And this percentage is higher among females. It's almost 20, uh, just about 24%. And 46.8% among lesbian, gay, and bisexual teens. So we can see that in some populations, the number's a lot higher. And um, sadly, 8.9% of high school students attempted suicide in the past year. Now, this is in the country. Um, suicide is the second leading cause of death for teens and young adults between the ages of 10 and 34. So, um, you know, and these all these references I just want to point out are from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services and the CDC. So mental illness, it's it's never absent, but I think a lot of times students and teens suffer in silence. And um, I think in the last couple of years, the topic of mental health has, has become a hot topic and more people now are talking about it than ever. So um, I see that this conversation, this topic is, is, um, 
is being brought up quite a bit. And I think more people are coming out and talking about their mental health. So I think these statistics are closer to what they probably are than they have ever been just because, you know, people are really working towards stopping the stigma of mental health, depression, and suicide. Great. And you're the program director for a brighter day charity. It's just a young six-year-old charity. It helps teens and their parents deal with stress and depression. Obviously you can't ignore the parents and you can't ignore the teens. Right. But it has a goal of stopping teen suicide. And I know that we, the charity touches thousands of families literally monthly. Um, Tell us about the charity and what the charity is doing to have an impact because it's all about having an impact. Absolutely. Yeah. So a brighter day, I'll just speak a little bit about it, but was founded to spread awareness um, and find help for those who are struggling with stress and depression um, by building community through social events and our resources. We provide resources for stress, depression, and suicide to parents, to both parents and teens with the end goal of stomping out teen suicide. Um, And all of our resources are public, so anybody can access them. Um, Yeah, that's a little bit about what we do, what our mission is, and we really, our end goal is to stomp out teen suicide. So uh, we do this through um, our program. So we just, uh, we have a new partnership with BetterHelp. They are the world's largest online um, telehealth therapy. So all their therapy is done through a computer, a tablet, a smartphone. Um, But therapy is really important. And um, the reason why therapy is important is Teens can talk to a licensed professional who's a neutral party about anything and everything they're experiencing without guilt, shame, or judgment. Um, And while talking to friends and family about these things is great, a therapist will be able to provide some some extra resources such as psychoeducation. So um, that's really talking to them about what depression is, what anxiety is, and, and how it affects them. And, you know, therapists can also provide coping skills and just navigating mental illness overall. So we're incredibly excited to um, to have our partner or new partnership with BetterHelp. So that's one of the ways that um, that we're able to really live live into our mission. So my team would never have gone and he took his life. My team would never have gone to live counseling. He just mm-hmm. or if he did, he would have shut up. He would have been looking for something more in his own world, right. uh, which was much more cell phone based. What would have been available? What's available? for someone like him today. Yeah, so BetterHelp, yeah. So BetterHelp, you can actually text your therapist 100% of the time. There is no face-to-face contact needed. There is texting available, a phone call, and or a video call. So for your son, maybe the texting would have resonated most with him, made him feel most comfortable. So let's say you and I are having a therapy conversation right now, it could all be happening over text. Um, Some people feel more comfortable that way, maybe not showing their face or having their voice being heard. So that's something that could have been, if it was available, maybe your son would have been comfortable with that. So for the teen that wants to get some help or the parent that wants to get some help, how today would they handle texting? Uh, Say a little bit more about that. Where the te- a teen wants help. I know that the charity has a texting program mm-hmm. all over the website. What does a teen have to do, a parent have to do to get some type of immediate response? Because my teen might have done it at midnight. Mm, That's what I you understand. A parent obviously would be more normal time. But what do they do? What, what action can they do to get help tonight? So, yeah. So better help is our long-term support our resource. You know, this is three, six, nine months of talk therapy. We also have a program, uh, a partnership with Crisis Text Line. Um, uh, The Crisis Text Line is a text-based crisis intervention program, um, and it's powered by volunteer crisis counselors, and they answer text from people in crisis. And this is specifically for mental health emergencies and um, in, in potential um, suicide. So really they bring people from a hot moment to a cool, calm moment through listening, problem solving, and safety planning. Um, and this resource that I'm talking about is available 24 seven and it's unlimited. So when a teenager or a parent is in crisis, they can text the word brighter 
to 741741 to connect with a crisis counselor who will walk them through the steps of what to do next. So essentially, it's almost like a 911 service, but specifically for mental health and uh, crisis situations. And how about for the people who like to read and research? Is there something available that the charity does that's unique? Um, yeah, so we so we have parent and teen toolkits online that are accessible again 24 7 they're public and this has all the information about the crisis text line about better help is all in there along with other resources signs and symptoms of depression and anxiety how to support a loved one through this time so if they want to sit down and go through resources without having to talk to somebody over text or on the phone that's also available to them so i know most parents want to do a good job as parenting and they want to raise a happy and healthy child. That's We just live in that world where mm -hmm. thankfully most people think like that. I'm sure mm -hmm. it's a very small percentage of people that don't think like that. Unfortunately, they do. There are people like that. They just uh, There's no empathy, parental empathy there. So if you've got teens that are struggling and you don't know what to do and you're just looking for starting with some help, what's your best recommendation? My best recommendation so you're okay. So yeah. So my, my best recommendation would be for the first step would be for the parents to educate themselves as much as possible. So I would say learning the signs and symptoms of depression, um, starting conversations with your teen or loved one about, you know, just opening up discussion to talk about these things. Um, and then I think once you have that that foundation, that trust, um, then you can really start providing support by encouraging treatment, um, staying alert for signs of suicide, things like that. So I'm a parent and we live in a two parent world. A lot of times we're both are working full time. Mm -hmm. Nobody's talking at dinner and nobody's communicating. And I feel like a taxi driver rather than a parent sometimes. Mm -hmm. I've heard that it's a great idea to Take the cell phones and put them in a basket. Don't bring them to dinner. Don't even talk to grandma. No texting, no conversation. For, force the conversation. Is that a healthy thing to do? Well, I'm not a parent. I uh, I helped raise my sister and I've coached, uh, gosh, hundreds of, of teens and young adults uh, uh, in the sport of volleyball. I always encourage the phones to go away. My rule is at the beginning of practice, phones go in the backpacks and they don't come out until the end. And the reason for that is I encourage honest and open conversation. I love to hear what my boys and my girls that I coach, what they're up to in their personal lives. You know, um, we talk anything about school, friendships, college. I think that's really where the, the meaningful conversation start is when phones are put away, technology is put away, the laptop screens are closed. Um, but I would love to know your opinion about that. I mean, you are a parent. Has that worked for you? No, I, I'm a, I'm a big fan when, when I talk about how to, uh, deal with your teen, uh, have put yourself, have cell phone free dinners. So you have questions. And I know on the website, I was reading it. We give examples of questions like, how was your day? Who's your best friend? Not just, and don't let the, the one, the one syllable answer like good or okay. Mm -hmm. Dig a little bit. You got to dig a little bit. But you got to find out what's going on and find out about their friends. Uh, find out. My mother used to ask me all the time, tell me about your friends and what they're doing. She was really asking me about me mm -hmm. and what, how I'm doing because I'd rather talk about them than me anyway. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's just normal. But uh, she asked that. And those are questions. That it's the in-depth conversation. And then, of course, driving between things, talking, that was a great opportunity. Taking a walk was talking. Anything that we could do that's not going to be interrupted with nonsense. And, you know, the cell phone, the Instagram, the TikTok, the Facebook, I've learned as a parent, there there's more negative than positive. You know, granted, they can research the report and find out about whatever they want in two seconds, but they also get the highlight reel of everybody else's life. And it makes them feel terrible that everybody's having more fun at life than they are. Absolutely. So as, a, as you're running a charity and you're doing the, the, the good things out there to really make a difference. And, and I know that you know, the charity is touching literally tens of thousands of people a month now with the resources online and, and everything that's coming down that's live or, or, or texting or whatever. 
it has to make money. It has to survive. These things are not free. Having resources means you have to have a writer. You're paid. Um, so you're, you're a, a, a good expense, but the money's got to, the money doesn't come from heaven. You know, even if it's good money, do good money. So charities have to raise money. And I have the phrase that, you know, raising money for charities like politics. You, you have to ask for money all the time. So how does a brighter day, and by the way, it's, a, it's at www.abrighterday.info. Uh, we're at uh, prosperityfinancialgroup.com. You can reach me um, at 925-314-8503 uh, or um, Elliot, E-L-L-I-O-T, at prosperityfinancialgroup.com. Uh, we are talking with Shana Steinberg, who is the program director of A Brighter Day. And you definitely want to take a look at the website for abrighterday.info. Really good stuff out there. But what does the charity do? What does a brighter day do to raise money? And then I'll talk about donations and how people can donate in general to their favorite charity, not just a brighter day, because it may be near and dear to you and near and dear to me, but it doesn't have to be near and dear to somebody else. They might yeah. have cancer or leukemia or diabetes or a church or a synagogue or a food habitat. Yeah, so um, a brighter day, we have two big events each year. Our first one is our um, golf tournament. It happens May the month between the month of May and June. Um, this is a huge event. We have hundreds of golfers all supporting our cause to stomp out teen suicide. Um, so that is a huge event of ours. We also have our virtual gala in October, November months. It's happening on November 10th this year from 5.30 to 7 p.m. And we'll be raising money in your son's honor as well as to support our charity and to support our cause. And how would they register for this? Yeah, so uh, they can register through an online link. We can include that somewhere in our podcast afterwards. Um, it's free to attend. There will be music and entertainment from uh, about 5.30 to 7.15. And then we have our live auction. I'm so, so sorry, from about 5.30 to 6.15. And then our live auction will take place from about 6.15 to seven o'clock. Okay, a lot of good stuff. And I urge people to get on there at 5.30. I think the, I think I was just told the music interludes dropped down to 15 minutes from that time. Oh. <laughs> but it starts a little bit early, but you miss a day, you miss a lot, just how it is. Um, but it is that I know you can register at the website, a brighter day.info, and you can do it via your cell phone or your laptop or computer or tablet, whatever works. But let me also talk about for a moment get how people, how charities fundraise in general. And, and it could be, again, this is for anybody that's listening that charity is important to them and not just a brighter day, but charity is important. So let me go through three or four different examples of how people can donate, if I could. And it, it applies to a brighter day, but it also applies to American Cancer Society or your local church. Uh, it doesn't make a difference. So first of all, every charity will take your outright donation. It's tax deductible. Write a check or go, write a credit card or donate through their website. $100, $1,000, $100,000. It doesn't matter. You can do it monthly. You can do it one time. You can do it quarterly. Every charity, for the most part, the major 501c3 charities, and that's what you're looking for, the 501c3, and that's the C and the three are both in parentheses, um, we'll take your money and you'll get to write it off. But there are other ways. And uh, here's an example of another way that many of my clients, because I'm in the financial business, have donated and they said they create an irrevocable life insurance trust. So you pass these building, Shana's that say, uh, this hospital is dedicated in honor of this person or the wing of the hospital mm -hmm. is dedicated to this person or the building of this church is dedicated to this person, or the, the conference room is dedicated to that person somewhere. Libraries is a good example. How does that happen? Well, there are people, we live in a world of technology and startups, there are people who have accumulated enormous amounts of cash, good for them, congratulations. And they make outright cash donations and they want it named after their mother, their child, whatever it might be. And I want it as the L.E. Callen wing of the Oakland Children's Hospital. I have the cash. Here's my $5 million cash check. And certainly, like I said, every charity will take that money. But many people are doing this with life insurance. So what they're doing is they're saying, sometimes it's life insurance on both parents, which is much, much less on one parent. Because statistically, two people have to die for one after that versus one. And they say, look, I'm going to pay a premium of 
5,000 or $10,000 a year or $5,000 a month, whatever that might be. And I'm gonna leave this charity a million or 2 million or 3 million or $5 million. And I'd like it to be used for this. And they don't make it anonymous, some do. I mean, there's an old Jewish phrase that there's nothing greater in the world than giving, char giving a charity anonymously. But we live in a world where anonymous is not the most popular way of giving. Most people do want to be recognized. And I get that too. You know, you work your life, whole life, and you want to be recognized for it. And so they donate and they, they leverage their five or 10,000 or 15,000 a year into a million dollars. And I'm, I'm just giving an example here. Mm -hmm. And so they pay $300,000 over their lifetime to donate a million dollars. And they've talked to the charity and say, this is how I like the million dollars to be spent. It can go into your general operating budget. It can go into a charity like a brighter day to, I want you to hire three Shana Steinbergs uh, across the country. I want to, you know, th that's how you can, I want to have a building in your honor. You can do lots of things and that's life insurance. You can also donate with real property. Real property meaning I have a building or two, rental property. I can donate the building and have the charity receive the income from the property but my family gets back the building upon my death. I could turn around and say, I want you to keep the building, take all the income from the charity and sell it upon my death. You could turn around and say, um, I'll take the income, I'm gonna give you my building, uh, but um, my family gets the income while I'm alive, but you get the building upon my death or my spouse and my death. That's three different ways I just mentioned, all slightly different on okay. real property. And then of course, people have appreciated stock that they simply do not need. And that we live in a world where this year things are much less appreciated than they used to be because we've had a terrible stock market. But um, if you do have stock and you've owned it for 20 years or you inherit it and it's got even a low basis. So if you cash in, cash your stock in, you're going to pay a huge capital gains tax. You could donate it and you donate it at current market value. So you've got stock that costs you 5,000, that's worth 100,000. Um, some of these startups are like that. You're now donating $100,000 stock. If your family, if you cashed it out and gave it to your family, 95 of that $100 would be subject to capital gains tax. Now it's all to begin tax deductible. So I know a brighter day would take all that, but that's how a an example of several charities would work. And I'm telling you, if you asked every charity director that's a um, real charity there, not just somebody working out of the garage, they would take all those options. And every charity needs the cash today. This is one of the issues that we go through in a 401k world, okay. where companies say, I don't wanna have a 401k because all my employees would rather have a, a bonus rather than a match. And that's true. I mean, you're an employee, Shana, of a brighter day, you'd much rather have $5,000 in your pocket than $5,000 in your 401k. That's just who we are because, you know, like most people, you'll spend that $5,000 before you even get it. You've got uses <laughs> for it, right? I need a new car. I need some new clothes. I'm finally taking that trip to Europe. School Whatever payments, school payments and school payments. Yeah, they're all valid to you. They're not necessarily valid to me, but they're all valid to you. But we're really doing you a better service long-term by matching $5,000 in your 401k or 403b, which is the nonprofit world of the 401k. And in the long run, we're doing you a service. But in the short run, let's face it, you'd rather have the money in your pocket. <laughs> That's just li that's just life as we do it. So as we as we end this right now, Shana, tell everybody again about what's going on November 10th, how they reach you, how they get in touch with the charity, and how they download resources and so forth. Absolutely. November 10th is our third annual virtual gala from 5:30 to 7 p.m. We have music and entertainment from 5:30 to 6 ish, and then we have our live auction with Keith McLean. You can reach me. Oh, I'm so sorry. You can find our resources at a brighter day.info. All of our resources are on our page. So check it out there. You can reach me uh, to chat, to talk about potential partnerships at Shana, S H A I N A, at a brighter day.info. Uh, my phone number is 925 360 1670. Feel free to shoot me a text or give me a call. Um, but I am always open and uh, willing to connect. But please donate, attend, and spread the word about our virtual gala. We would love to see you there. Great. And I want to remind you that you know the, the website is free, the resources are free, the um, text line is free, which is type the word brighter to 741741. The the 
partnership with BetterHelp. Uh, there are basically would be free at this point because the charity is covering the cost of live uh, Zoom meetings, live Zoom meetings with a real licensed counselor. Yes. It's fabulous. That's a limited time offer, but that is at the moment going on. Uh, yes. And feel you're... free to please reach out to me if you are in financial need of therapy. Uh, like Elliot said, we are providing free therapy sessions through BetterHelp. So please reach out. Again, my email is Shana, S-H-A-I-N-A, -A at a brighter day info. And there's even, I know, a partnership with an inpatient treatment center for teens if it gets to that point. Correct. So, so we've been talking with Shana. Shana, I want to thank you so much. Uh, somebody wants to reach me, it's 925 314 8503. We've been, we've been talking about nonprofits and the, everything that Shane has talked about with a brighter day. The fundraising can be applied to your favorite charitable donation uh, organization or spread among many. Uh, this is a fantastic one. Uh, but most importantly, you want to have a charity that is an impact player making a huge difference. And that's exactly what Shane is doing. So thank you, Shana. Thank you so much for having me. It was great talking. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you soon.